This is a great day for Cal. I am thrilled to be able to introduce our new head coach for our great basketball team, Conzo Martin. We are uh, uh, at the end of what has been a very, uh, very serious and deliberative and comprehensive search for the right person to lead our basketball program going forward. And we have found exactly the right person with exactly the right fit for the University of California at Berkeley. Conzo Morton comes, of course, uh, to us from Tennessee, where he's been the head coach for the past three years. You might have seen those orange suits and uh, orange uh, uniforms in the, in the Sweet 16. Uh, that was just a backdrop for, uh, for Conzo uh, looking great on the sideline. And, um, uh, and he brings with him a record of uh, uh, building up uh, the Tennessee team, of great success with that team, and I mean great success both in terms of their academic performance uh, and their athletic performance. Uh, the record he's established in terms of graduation and APR uh, is, uh, is second to none. It's a, it's a great record, and one of the things that we talked about uh, was the need to maintain uh, a, a real attention uh, on the subject of the academic as well as the athletic sides of the house. Uh, and we uh, were minds that were, uh, that were meeting exactly in the right place. Uh, the other thing that we talked about was the, the, the great distinction both of the athletic programs and of course of the ac academic programs here at the University of California, Berkeley as chancellor. Uh, I am concerned that we uh, maintain a, a real focus on the question of, uh, of how to make sure our athletic program is both excellent as an athletic program, but also excellent as a partner uh, in our chief mission here at the university, uh, which is to uh, be uh, uh, true to uh, our position as the preeminent, the preeminent public university in the world. Uh, so, in our uh, in our in our search, we we talked to a lot of different a lot of different people. Uh, we, uh, we really did uh, uh, take our time because we wanted to make the best possible choice uh, and we believe we made the best possible choice. We are thrilled to welcome Conzo to campus on this beautiful day. And Conzo, I have to tell you this, it's beautiful every day in California. <laughs> <laughs> so I'd like to uh, uh, introduce uh, our, yeah, our athletic director, Sandy Barber, to say a little bit more about this spectacular hire. Thank you, Chancellor. Uh, obviously, we're here to uh, officially announce Conzo Martin as our next head men's basketball coach. I have a few thank yous and a, and a few comments uh, from a search perspective uh, before I get into uh, how excited I am about Conzo Martin joining the Cal family. Uh, first of all, I want to thank our student athletes. I want to thank the, the men in our, our men's basketball program. Uh, this was two weeks of, uh, of uncertainty for them. And I have to tell you, I could not be more proud of how they conducted themselves. They, they kept their focus on the classroom. They kept their focus on their, their postseason work on the court and they just took care of business. And I really, really uh, appreciate them. I'm proud of them uh, and I couldn't be, uh, I, I couldn't be happier uh, to present to them uh, their new head coach uh, a little bit earlier today. Coach Martin is our 16th head men's basketball coach and comes to us, as uh, Chancellor Dirk said, from the University of Tennessee and most recently off uh, a Sweet 16 run in the 2014 uh, NCAA tournament. One of the things that was most impressive to us, uh, and I do uh, have to thank my partners here, uh, Nick Dirks and, uh, and John Wilton, as everything uh, we do at this university, it's a partnership. Uh, I am incredibly pleased that there is an interest across campus 
uh, in this athletics program and in particularly our men's basketball program. Uh, and uh, I was joined in this uh, every step in the way, every step of the way uh, by Chancellor Dirks and, and, and Vice Chancellor Wilton. And I thank them for uh, going along this journey uh, with us and, uh, and helping us to get where, uh, where we got here. I also want to thank uh, a search advisory committee. Um, had a number of, uh, of folks, alumni, uh, current students, uh, faculty members, uh, members of the intercollegiate athletic staff who participated as advisors uh, very, very early on uh, in the process, not around candidates, but around qualities, uh, uh, traits that we were looking for, and it was extremely helpful as we, uh, as we went down this road. But one of the things that stood out about Conzo Martin is his record, his record of success, his record of winning, his record of developing young men, and the comments uh, every step of the way uh, about who he is as a man and who he is as a coach. Uh, the facts are clear, conference, champion, or conference coach of the year, postseason bursts each of the past five seasons, uh, 63 and 41 record at the University of Tennessee, including 24 and 13 this year, and that sweet 16 run that I previously alluded to. A four-year playing career at Purdue University, uh, head coaching tenure at Missouri State, where he won a regular season conference title, former student athlete, former NBA player, He's played and coached alongside some of the most highly successful and regarded mentors in the game, including Gene Cady. Uh, and we will have for you some comments that Coach Cady has made uh, about Conzo that, uh, that I think are, are pretty spectacular. Uh, Coach Martin is inheriting a program in very good shape. And I have to thank Coach Montgomery and his staff for the last six years. And as we said when, when Mike announced his retirement, the most successful six-year run in our history. This program is in very good shape, and we have Coach Montgomery to, to thank for that. Our search placed a very high premium on someone who had demonstrated success at the Division I and ultimately BCS level. Conzo has done that. He has shown that he's a winner. He has shown that he's a winner every step of the way, and every year, of every step of the way has gotten better. So he's a winner, he's a leader, and he's a developer of men. And I would tell you throughout the course of our conversations, community, family kept coming up. And this is uh, a man along with his wonderful wife and, uh, and family who is uh, going to come to this community and really dive in. Dive into what to our student athletes, dive into this athletic department, this university, and the Bay Area community. So I know that this is a man who is going to develop our students, and that is our absolute number one goal as educators here at the University of California, Berkeley. And along with his traits as a winner, his skills as a basketball coach, his mentors, he brings all of that to us. So ladies and gentlemen, Conzo Martin. Thank you. Um, certainly an honor for me. Um, very humbling at this point. Um, a young man that come from East St. Louis, Illinois, uh, and having the opportunity to coach at the number one public institution in the world. Uh, very humbling, and I'm certainly appreciative of it. I take academics very seriously. Um, here at Tennessee, we did a great job with our guys. We had a 960 APR, 980, and then we were on pace to get a 1,000 APR. Uh, so it's very important. We want the academics and athletics to go hand in hand. Um, and I want to thank these three people for giving me an opportunity, Chancellor Dirks, Sandy, Vice Chancellor Wilton, for giving me a tremendous opportunity. Uh, there are a lot of qualified candidates, great candidates, uh, and they chose me, so I, and I don't take that lightly. And this is a great, great opportunity, a beautiful place. Got off the plane, I just said, ah, it was beautiful. <laughs> and it was great. Um, but first and foremost, I'd like to thank Coach Montgomery. Um, you know, one of the best in the game. A good man, did a great job in building a community, building a team at a high level, a tremendous level of respect for him. I've always watched him from afar and admired his work as a coach, how he led his guys on and off the court from an academic standpoint. And that can't go unnoticed because um, he's a tremendous coach. But what he did with his guys in the classroom, it speaks volumes. And that's not an easy thing to do to get young men 
every day to be consistent in the classroom, but also perform at a high level on the floor. So a lot of credit goes to he and his staff uh, for maintaining such a high level. Uh, great. But I also want to thank my Tennessee basketball family, first and foremost, for giving me an opportunity. Um, I spent three years there, gave my life to the program, developed tremendous relationships uh, from an administrative standpoint, the fans, obviously the players. I love all of them because that's what our program is about, sharing love and trust. And, and building a community. So uh, I appreciate everything they gave me and the opportunity. And again, I don't take that for granted. Uh, it's a wonderful place. Uh, and we will continue to build on the success of Coach Montgomery. Uh, he did a tremendous job. Uh, I'm excited about it. And I think the biggest thing that we'll do, we'll certainly reach out to the community as well as the campus. But we got to get out to the community. And I take pride in that. And that's big for our program. And again, take care and go Bears. Yay. Well, I think first and foremost, when you're talking about the style of play, uh, we want to defend at a high level, regardless of the opponent, what day we're playing, if we're practicing. we got to do that first and foremost. And, and our goal is to be the best defensive team in the league uh, and, and fight for the top notch in the country. And, and we have to do that in order to be successful. Because the thing I talk about all the time, shots don't always fall, but we got to defend, rebound, and play hard every night. Uh, offense, we run a motion-style offense. We have spacing. Uh, we penetrate the gaps. We throw it inside to our bigs. And I'm one of those guys, if you're, if you're a guard, you can post up your post up. If you're big, you can play on the perimeter. That's a free-flowing offense, but a lot of spacing, setting screens, attacking the rim. Um, in this past year, we won one of five teams in the country in the top 20 in offense and defensive efficiency. So you have to be able to do both. And uh, you obviously have to score the ball. So we want to do both. Other questions? Other John? Hey, John. John Crumpacker, San Francisco Chronicle. Uh, how did your uh, first meeting with the players go and just your, your impressions? And uh, how do you think you came off? I thought it went great. Because um, I, I think with, with, with young guys, when you recruit them into your program, um, they get used to a certain staff. And as a family, as a culture, and then when it's changed for young guys, it's not easy. And I understand that. Uh, so for my, jo my job is to allow those guys to let their guards down and give me an opportunity. And the two things I talk about with our guys is trust and love. Um, and I think the first thing, um, in order for us to go forward, we have to have trust amongst each other. And then the thing I talk about to those guys is love, because if there's love, then you let your guard down. You allow me to coach. You allow me to lead you. So it's very important for me. But I thought it was great. Coach Conzo, Antonio Gonzalez with you. Hey, Antonio. Um, you're replacing a figure here, Mike Montgomery, who obviously had a lot of success. You did similarly in Tennessee. I'm curious what you learned from that experience and what you can take from it, replacing a guy like Bruce Pearl, who was obviously beloved by the well, I think first and foremost, uh, you have your style of play. You carve out your niche, and I think that's the most important thing. I, I think for me, it's always the administrative support, the fan support, the community, the former players, the alumni base. All those things are very important for me, and I think in order for a program to be successful at a high level, I mean, we've got to have a tremendous student section. And so for me as a coach, your style is your style, and I, and I, I, don't, I don't mind following guys. I like learning from guys, so that's the most important thing. When you talk about Coach Montgomery, he's one of the best teachers that ever taught the game, so I, I'll definitely pick his brain on a lot of things. Hey, Rob, can you identify where you're from, too? Yeah. Uh, hey, Coach. Uh, Michael Rosen, Daily hey, California going, student newspaper. Um, this may be too early to uh, comment on, but have you put any thought into uh, retaining Travis DeCure as an assistant coach? Well, I'll definitely meet with all the staff guys, and he's, he's definitely one of them I, I would certainly like to meet with. Um, and at, at my previous stops as a head coach, I've always retained guys. If they're qualified to do the job, and there's a good relationship, so I have no problem with that, but I'll meet with all the guys. Can we get the mic over to Joe Fonzi? John, we'll come back to you. Joe, do you want to grab a, there's a, yep. Okay, go ahead. Joe Fonzi from uh, hey, Joe. KTVU Television. I'm, I'm just curious, obviously, you would have been, uh, they would have been very happy to have you stay at, at Tennessee. What was the appeal to, to take this job at this time? Well, again, you're talking about one of the, well, the number one public institution in the world. And to have an op opportunity to coach very talented basketball players, as well as student athletes, uh, and guys not only get jobs when they're done, but successful careers, that's most important to me. And I think it's a great, place to recruit. You're talking about a beautiful campus. Uh, the Bay Area is beautiful. Uh, there's so many opportunities. Uh, young men can get exposed to a lot of different things. So, I, mean, I think it speaks volumes, and I think it has a chance to be special here. So I think that's the most intriguing thing to me, a uh, place um, that I can spend the rest of my life because of the opportunities and the players you're able to recruit here. Coach, congratulations. Henry Thank Wolford you. with Comcast Sportsnet mm -hmm. Bay Area. 
A question for you. Do you set a timeline on what you would like to get accomplished when you move to a new university like Cal? And how long do you think it will take to make this team a perennial team that goes to March Madness tournaments and make a, a run at the championship? Uh, good question. I, I think the first one as far as how long it takes to, uh, to be a perennial NCAA tournament team. Uh, it's obviously assessing your personnel when you get into practice. And I, I think that's the goal. We had some frank talks amongst each other when I was with the players about what they thought, what they thought about the league and where can we go as a league. So I thought that was very interesting. Um, so I'm excited about that part. But I think that's the goal on a consistent basis because obviously it's a league that showed it can get multiple teams in a tournament. So that speaks volumes. And I think for me, a timetable. I'm one of those guys that take one day at a time. Of course, the most important thing is assessing your staff before you can do anything. And recruiting is vital. But you got to have a quality staff in order to move forward. Because without a staff, you can't move forward. So that's first and foremost, getting the guys in place, and then we push forward. Jeff, do you have a follow-up there? Yeah, Jeff Ferrata with the Oakland trip. Hey, Jeff. Conzo, you, you had a strange season. Uh, you had people signing petitions to ask you to leave, uh, and then you finished strong, and you got to the Sweet 16, and they wanted you to stay, of course. Uh, you talk about how that experience perhaps made it easier to listen to the opportunity you have here. Well, I, I thought going through that, and, and to be honest with you, uh, when you talk about the petition, I probably didn't hear about it until it was too late. Because one thing about it, when, when you coach, you got your head down and you're working. You don't get consumed with things on the periphery outside of your players. And for me, I thought it was a great teaching point for our guys. Because we always talk about you know having character, going through adversity, dealing with situations. Uh, and what happens in the process, you're developing young men because they saw my approach every day. And I came to work with my hard hat on. And nothing changed. If a guy missed class, he runs 10 suicides. So that never changed. And I think what happened, young men became men in the process. Because as a coach, you continue to lead through adversity. And for me, again, it didn't bother me at all. And I thought it was a great teaching point for our players.